Chidoro M. Gatchelian. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Pakala ko din ako. Um, I, 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 I'm scheduled to do the first presentation. But because of the very heavy traffic, the white planes kanina sa pagkakot ako di nata ako ang beating the line. Anyway, uh, with me today are the two lawyers of the Legal Commission of the Just Central Office. Uh, we have here Adorni uh, uh, Angel Alviar, please and Attorney Fidel Borja. They will be helping me in discussing, of course, the better interpretation of Republic Act 8439. So, assistance of the lawyers. Ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned probably by Lita and, uh, of course, Asik Donia, this is the fourth and the final leg of our public consultation for Republic Act 8439, which is amended by Republic Act 11312. In fact, uh, what we're going to present to you today are the amendments only contained in, the sec in section 2 of the Republic Act in the quarter set. Something is wrong with the sound system. Pwede ba natin ipag-down-down yung umalaga pa? Parang may sasabog ka. Pangit na anong boses ko yun. Mukhang galing sa cave. Test. Yan. Mas okay yan. O si? Meron pa rin yan. O yun. Ano ba yun? Boses yun ah. Yung base nga yan, trap niya, ibaba mo ito eh. Hello, test. Okay na? Okay. Ayan. Section 2 only which covers one specific uh, amendment. And that is uh, the authority to certify who should be beneficiaries and who should not be beneficiaries of the... Republic Act 8439 or Magna Carta for Scientists, Researchers, in Engineers, and other science and technology personnel in the different government offices. Now, let us qualify that. This Republic Act is only applicable for all government workers. It does not cover privileges or benefits of scientists, researchers, and engineers in the private sector. Although later on, we may also touch some issues involving activities of the government, scientist, researcher, and engineer being seconded or working in the private sector. Okay, so the Public Act 8439, or what we call Magna Carta for Scientists, Researchers, and Engineers, and other SMT personnel in the government, has long been implemented by the government. How many of you here have been availing the benefits of Republic Act 8439? Please raise your hands. Oh, marami na pala. What about those who have not? Yung mga ngayon pala. Please, raise your hands. Oh, sige, my talk is for you guys. Those who have not availed of the Republic Act 8439 privileges. But for those who have already been availing this for quite a while, well, you just listen and probably you can contribute to what I'm going to discuss today. This is just a sort of a review. Now, we know very well that the objective of 8439 focuses towards motivating, incentivizing, and encouraging our people to go into science and technology or stay into science and technology work. The government has been do doing a lot of activities, moving heaven and earth to see to it that our scientists work in the government. Very recently, we have passed the Balik Scientist Program, which intends to, the, the Balik Scientist Law, which intends to incentivize or increase the incentives of our scientists who have been working abroad and are employed somewhere else over there outside the Philippines to come home and work in our country. That is if only to prove that scientists really play a very important role in seeing to it that we have a sustained economic growth from science and technology. And that is very undebatable. The amount of contribution that science and technology programs give or contribute to the national economic development is really very important and immeasurable. Well, technology and innovations are indeed the backbone of our economic development. Henceforth, scientists who are directly involved in such kind of activities are very important, important mamas in our country today. Look, 
The main purpose of 8429 is to see to it that the Department of the Science and Technology sector maintains a reservoir of scientists along that purpose to maintain the necessary reservoir of talent and manpower to sustain the drive towards science and technology mastery. Therefore, the role of science and technology, as I was saying, to be very, very important and vital in national economic development and progress. Now, the coverage. One, of course, for the Department of Science and Technology personnel. And who are these people from the DOST? We have four groups. The SMT managers, supervisors and planners, members of the scientific career system. How many of you here? We have one, of course, I know this person. He's been with us in all, almost all our Republican 8439 uh, programs. Sino accredited na ng scientific career system which is being awarded by the National Academy of Science and Technology. Wala pa, isa lang. Well, that is one area where if, even if you are employed in your respective agency, you can avail of that by being converted into a scientist. Plantilla holder. Scientist one, two, three, and four. Yeah, but of course, each of its level requires specific qualifications. Uh, despite working in your respective an entity or unit or agency, you can still be given a rank of scientist. That is through this process being enrolled and accredited, accredited by the scientific career system. Later on, we will be discussing the uh, National uh, Career Scientist Program. Then the third group, scientists, engineers, and researchers. We will be discussing what makes a person to become qualified and be considered as a scientist, a researcher, and an engineer. The fourth group is the technician and related science and technology personnel. But this group is only applicable to DOST in accordance to law. Probably you will determine later on out of the provision of the law why this is not applicable to other non DOST agencies. These are the drivers, the clerks, and many other people who are, work, who are not directly working under the program of research and development but in one way or another doing something in support of research and development activities in the DOST program. So the coverage, we have the non-DOST personnel. So other than the DOST, we have the non-DOST and that is you. Those people who are working outside of the Department of Science and Technology but are involved in science and technology activities may avail of the different benefits from the Public Act 8439 or Magna Carta. <clears throat> that heads of agencies, but the thing is, upon certification of the head of their agency, this is the new version. This is already the amended part of RA 8439. Later on, Attorney Alviac will be discussing this. Because it used to be what? Upon certification of the Secretary of the Department of Science and Technology. But because of the amendment, that authority was already transferred to the head of their agency, of your respective agency. Later on, the big question is, who is the head of the agency? Okay. Provided, look, there's a quality there. Provided that the heads of agencies shall abide by the guidelines promulgated by the Department of Science and Technology. Provided, they will follow up the guidelines to be promulgated by the OSD for the certification of those persons. Hence, this consultation, because we will soon be issuing, or the Department of Science and Technology will soon be issuing the guidelines governing these amendments. Hence, this consultation. We're asking from you. We'll be soliciting suggestions and maybe recommendations so that we can improve the guidelines that we're still, we're still drafting at this moment. So later on, maybe within March or April, the OST Secretary will be issuing the, those guidelines covering the, the directions and the procedures how to accredit or certify a non DOST personnel to become beneficiary and be entitled to the benefits of Republic Act 8439. 
Now, the classification of science and technology personnel. In the DOST, we have identified it already, but in the non-DOST, we have to consider the following. One, the science and technology managers, supervisors, and planners. Who are these people? Definitely self-explanatory. We can identify who these people are. Those who are graduate degree holders or have at least 10 years of managerial experience, or at least 10 years of managerial experience. Uh, actually, there's no change from the original version. This, this uh, requirement remains the same. Who are performing executive planning, policy making function to effectively carry out science and technology related activities. And those who are employed in R&D institutions and other organizations conducting STA. The bigger part of the discussion remains in the last, last sentence. Conducting STA. Anyone who is involved in STA, science and technology activities, but the big question is, what do we consider as STA? That, that spells the difference. Whether one is, is or is not invited to be called a science and technology personnel. So, when we consider s and managers, we are referring to those people who normally occupy what? Salary grades that ranges from salary grade 27 and above. Raise your hands. Who among you here? Occupies salary grade 27 and above. Come on, professors. Sino po? Ayaw niyo mag-pass ng kamay. Nahihiya kayo. Huwag kayong magalala. Alam namin kung kalagang makalaki ang binabawas sa inyong boys. Malaki yan. And then, science and technology supervisors. Who are these people? Associate scientists, assistant scientists, division chiefs, Supervising rights, science research specialists, and other positions of equivalent rank. Normally, these are the people who occupy salary grades 22 to 26. But of course, it's not. It's also possible that those who are in this particular salary range may also be designated as SMP, or can they, they may also be designated as SD planners. It depends on the institution or agency. But this is just the normal. Bracketing of managers, supervisors, and planners. And for the SMT planners, these are the people who are occupying the ranks of planning officer, project development officer, project evaluation, and other positions. And normally they are in this bracket SG 22 to 26. What is important is we are doing any of these three. We are occupying any of these three positions, regardless of the salary, grade. Now, the members of the scientific career system, we have one here. I'm sure you can have you, when you ask how to become a scientist, he can share his experiences. Because if it's the National Academy of Science and Technology, we are these people. Those who are being given a rank of scientists one to four. Pero ang galing niya, sir, scientist one occupies a salary grade of what? 26. Scientist one. Yeah. Scientist two is 27. Scientist three is 28. Scientist four is 29 up to 30. 35. Scientist five is 35. 30. Almost equivalent rank with an SUC president. Scientist pa lang yun, ha? Not necessarily professor five. But of course, sabi ko kanina, it's level. Ay merong strict requirements. It's not something that you're just going to pick up from the banana tree. It is really very difficult to obtain that. But nevertheless, the good thing is, even if you are only a researcher two, researcher three in your university, researcher one, it is very possible for you to occupy a rank of scientist one, two, or three, or four, or five depending on the qualifications that you are in possession. Meaning to say, that's an opportunity. Granting that using the NBC 461, you cannot jump in your university to a certain position because of some problems, but the other path could be through scientific career system. And this applies to all government agencies, not necessarily from the SUC. Even if we are from the FAR, from DA, wherever we are in the government, 
and our function is as scientist, researcher, and engineer, we can be considered, we can be qualified, and be top as scientist one to four under the national career scientist program. Through National Academy of Science and Technology accreditation system. The scientists who are employed in R&D and other organizations for at least college degree, one of the requirements, or at least college degree holders in any of the natural science. A lot of problems being encountered by those who were applying to become beneficiaries of Republic Act 8409, 